Yo guys, what is going on? JPS back from the video and today we're going to be reacting to 15 German brands you pronounce wrong. Now in the thumbnail of this video, Feli from Germany included a bunch of different German brands and I recognized every single brand that was in the thumbnail. So I'm really intrigued as to how I've been pronouncing these words wrong all my life. So let's get right into this. Hit the like button, hit subscribe. Let's go. Hey, have you seen my Adidas shoes? Your what shoes? Um, Adidas, the brand? Adidas. Oh, Adidas. That's... Um, not sure. Maybe you've left them in the car? Oh, in your friend's Volkswagen? Huh? Volkswagen, the car brand? It's a German car brand. You should know that. Oh, VW. Okay. VW. What? Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but have been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. So a little update before I get into the topic. I had my wrist surgery last Tuesday. Everything went well and my insurance approved it, so they're fully paying for it, which is great. Um, I was Imagine having to worry about that. It's for a few days, but I'm doing better every day. And today is the first time that I thought I would try to record something as you can see i'm having my first follow-up appointment in four days and as promised there will be another video about this topic in a few weeks but a few weeks ago before i broke my wrist i made a video about mistakes that many germans make when speaking english and a lot of you guys asked me to make a video the other way around about mistakes that non-native speakers make in german and that's definitely going to come but there's actually a very similar topic that i've been wanting to cover for a while so that's what I'll talk about today. German brand names that English native speakers often pronounce very differently than we do in Germany. And some of these brands, you may not even realize that they're German. So I made a list of 15 German brand names that are typically mispronounced in English. And I'm going to tell you how they're pronounced correctly in German and also give you a little background information on some of them as well. This video was sponsored by Skillshare, which I've talked about before. It's an online learning community that that offers thousands of classes for creative and curious people like you and me. They have countless video classes about things like a question that I think I should the great thing just what I do differently. We try to own a German car. All right, aren't you guys glad I skipped that? The first one is Audi. Most Americans that I Audi, know pronounce yeah. it like I just said it, Audi. In German, we say Audi. Audi. And there's actually a funny story as to where this name came from. In 1904, a guy called August Horch founded a car company called A. Horch und Company Motorenwarenwerke Zwickau. But a few years later, he left the company and founded a new one. But he wasn't allowed to call it Horch again. And since that's not only his last name, but also means listen in the imperative form, he ended up translating it into Latin. And that's Audi. So Audi That's means fire. listen. The company is located in Ingolstadt in Bavaria. I like Audi cars. I do like Audi cars. They, BMW might be my favorite though, I gotta say. Then of course, one of the most famous car brands in the world is this one. It's Porsche. located in Stuttgart, Germany. I've heard Americans pronounce it Porsche or Porsche. In German, we say Porsche. Porsche. So there's like this short A sound in the end, Porsche. It was founded by Ferdinand Porsche. Porsche in 1931 as a company for vehicle development work and consulting. And one of the first assignments that the company had was from the Nazi government at the time to design a car for the general public, which was what later would become Volkswagen. And so they designed the Volkswagen Beetle, the VW Käfer. Uh. This one sounded super funny to me when I first heard Mercedes how people Benz. pronounce it in English. I actually used to drive one back in Germany. Um, so most Americans call this Mercedes. In German, we pronounce it Mercedes. So oh. Mercedes versus Mercedes. Mercedes. No, 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 no. I'm way off. 
Mercedes. So it's really Mercedes. pretty different. And the full name, of course, is Mercedes Benz. I've also heard that in England, oh. people also refer to Mercedes as Merck. Um, a German will not know what you're talking about if you say that, just for your information. Originally, it was just FYI. the company Daimler Motorengesellschaft, founded in 1890. The name Mercedes was added later, inspired by a Daimler car dealer called Emil Jelinek, who was also driving car races under the alias Monsieur Mercedes, which was based on his daughter's first name, Mercedes Jelinek. The name was later also used for one of the car models in the year 1900, and then eventually became the name of the brand itself. Her name's Jelinek. This one simply has three letters, but of course they're pronounced differently in English and in German. BMW. In English people say BMW, in German we say BMW because W is pronounced BMW. W in German and it stands for Bayerische Motorenwerke, which means Bavarian Engine Works. And of course BMW is located in my hometown Munich, which is the capital of Bavaria. The company was founded in 1916 and originally mainly produced aircraft engines. It said that the logo represents a plane propeller and it also has the colors of Bavaria blue and white to show the company's origin then after World War One they survived by producing motorcycle engines farm equipment household items and railway brakes and built their first motorcycle in 1923 and then became a car manufacturer a few years later they then went back to concentrating on aircraft engines again during World War II using forced labor from prisoners in concentration camps and didn't get Get back into car manufacturing until 1952. Overall, all of these German car brands that I just mentioned are more or less considered luxury brands in the US. I mean, Porsche, of course, is considered a luxury brand in Germany as well, but Audi, Mercedes and BMW are pretty much just regular car brands to us. Obviously, they do have expensive luxury cars as well, but the regular models are driven by people from all social classes in Germany. Yeah, I can't tell you how many A4s and 328Is I see on the road. It's there's they're just become regular. And there's so many like just think about all of the German car brands that flourish in the United States. Like we really do love German cars. I got to say, I love them too. I wish I could have English one. speakers call this Volkswagen, A while GTI? in Germany we Volkswagen usually just GTI. call it VW, VW, VW. But even if we did go by the full name, it would be pronounced Volkswagen and not Volkswagen. So just imagine that it was spelled with an F and V instead. Volkswagen. Volks this Volks literally Wagen. means people's car or car of the people. And it was founded during the Third Reich in the late 1930s because Hitler wanted to have a car that was affordable for middle class Germans and that met the needs of an average family. So this was his attempt to make cars something that wasn't only available to upper class people, but to the general public. And the oh. company is based in Wolfsburg. How noble, how noble. What a great guy. Now let's move on to something other than cars. So this is one of the brands where when I heard Americans say this for the first time, I didn't understand at all what they were referring to because they usually Adidas. pronounce it Adidas. And in Germany, we say Adidas. Adidas, Adidas. Super different. It's, it's the difference. second largest sportswear manufacturer in the world after Nike. And I don't think that a lot of people know that this is a German company. It also has an interesting backstory. It was founded by Adolf Dassler, whose nickname was Adi. So the brand name is based on his first and last name. Adi Das. He founded the company at his mother's house name. after he returned from World War I and he actually played a big role in developing spiked running shoes. In 1924, his brother Rudolf joined the company and they founded the Dassler Brothers Shoe Factory, but they later got into a fight, split up and his brother actually founded his own company called Puma, which became the biggest rival of Bro, Ad what the heck? These dudes were really rival. <laughs> I had no idea that Adidas was a uh, was a German brand, and I had no idea that Puma was. I'm learning so much. This is insane. I love how she's like going through the background of all these brands after kind of embarrassing me of how I've been pronouncing them wrong the whole time. This is a crazy story, though. <laughs> oh my Factory. god. Factory. But they later got into a fight, split up, and his brother actually founded his own company called 
Puma, which became the biggest rival of Adidas. So both Adidas and Puma are German brands. I think Adidas is a bit better than Puma. Another though. shoe manufacturer that many Germans would probably consider oh, very, very God. German. Like if you talk about something typically oh. German, Birkenstock is definitely going to be mentioned. I, do you guys want me to go into detail on the type of people that wear these in the United States? Oh... Okay, let's go. But of course, this brand is known all over the world nowadays, and it's natural that people pronounce it with their native accent. So English speakers usually say Birkenstock. In German, we say Birkenstock. Birkenstock, Birkenstock, which literally translates to birch stick. The roots of the company go all the way back to the 18th century, by the way. Wow. From shoes to alcohol, this is pronounced Jägermeister in German. Jägermeister. English speakers usually say Jägermeister, which is pretty much the same, just with a pretty thick accent. And people also often use the abbreviation Jäger, like, can I have a shot of Jäger, please? It literally means Jäger hunt bomb. master. Jäger is the hunter and Meister is master. And it's a German herbal liquor. This is a German grocery store. Aldi. You can also find them in other European countries, and they even have some stores in the U.S. Oh, I... oh, it's it's more than some at this point, and I actually really like whatever it's called. <laughs> they have some they have some uh, cool products. Like it's just it's kind of this middle ground between different types of grocery stores. I like it. I do usually like get it. the majority of my groceries at Aldi here in the US. In Germany, Aldi. we call stores like Aldi or Lidl discounters Aldi. because they sell groceries for very low prices. In English, people usually pronounce this Aldi. I think I've also heard Aldi before, but I think most people say Aldi. Aldi. Or they also sometimes add an S that isn't there in the end and say Aldi's. In Germany, we just say Aldi. It has its origins in 1945 when the two brothers Theo and Karl Albrecht took over their mother's corner store and came up with the concept of having a small selection while having low prices. The name Aldi comes from Albrecht Discount, so Albrecht, which is their last name, Discount. In Germany we have Aldi Süd and Aldi Nord, Aldi South and Aldi North. Again, this is because of two brothers splitting up into two different businesses. In the US, the store is simply called Aldi and it actually... What's up with all these brothers fighting in Germany, man? What's going on with that? It belongs to Aldi South, while the store Trader Joe's belongs to Aldi North. Oh my god! Now let's move on to cosmetics. What? Nivea is a German brand from Hamburg that's mainly known for its face lotion in the little blue container. But of course, they offer a large variety of products nowadays. Again, I find the English pronunciation pretty funny here. English native speakers usually say Nivea, Nivea. In German, we say Nivea, Nivea. So the emphasis is on the E, Nivea. Okay, listen. This is, it's a great video and, and yes, I, I do like it, but at the same time, well, we're, I wasn't taking it. <laughs> See, wrong. It is wrong, but at the same time, like, those are the, that's the correct way to pronounce it in English. It's just a German word, so you're not going to get it right. But it is pretty staggering to see what I've been calling these the whole time, because it is wrong. That's that's not what the, the word was intended to be pronounced like. <laughs> these, like, I, I can't believe Adidas. I had been saying wrong the whole time. Wow, and Audi, those are the big ones. This is a German hair cosmetics brand that you can find all over the world pretty much. In German, we pronounce it Schwarzkopf, which literally Schwarzkopf. means black head. Schwarzkopf. English native Schwarzkopf. speakers usually pronounce it Schwarzkopf or Schwarzkopf or something along those lines. Sounds about right. Deutsche Bank is the largest bank in Germany. Deutsche Bank also literally means German bank. Of course, you can find Deutsche Bank not only in Germany, but in other countries as well. A good friend of mine here in Cincinnati actually just did an internship with them in their New York City location. And she's also going to start a full-time job with them soon. And Americans usually pronounce it Deutsche Bank or something along those lines. And my friend always uses the abbreviation Deutsch when she refers to it. Um, so like she said, I got a job offer from Deutsch which is just really funny to me because that literally just means German. <laughs> 
This is a German manufacturer of high-end domestic appliances and it's not exactly pronounced wrong in English, but English native speakers usually say something like Miele, Miele. Um, so it usually sounds more like an A in the end, whereas in German we say Miele. Miele. So the last letter is just a little bit different. And Miele really does stand for quality. If you invest in a Miele dishwasher or washing machine, you just know that it's going to be a good product and it's going to last. This is something that everyone knows and Haribo. loves, hopefully. Haribo. Maybe not everyone knew that Haribo is actually German. We pronounce it Haribo. Haribo. And again, the name originates in the name of the founder of the That's company, German. which was Hans Riegel. And he was from the city of Bonn in Germany. So Hans Riegel from Bonn. And he always took the first two letters, put them together, and it became Haribo. Hans Riegel Bonn. Haribo. I gotta say, Germany really has put a lot forward into the world. When you consider the size of Germany and its history and just everything with that, you're like, wow, Germany really has, like, Germany's really doing it. Like, damn. That just keeps coursing through my mind as we watch all these videos. Like, okay, okay, Germany. I see you guys. I see y'all. I mean, y'all put Haribo into the world. Oh, sorry. Haribo. <laughs> Whatever it was. <laughs> oh, no. Y'all put that into the world. We deserve an applause just for that. Because I love those damn gummy, gummy bears. They're so good. And last but not least, let's talk about a company that is not doing super well during these times. But it's one of the largest companies in Germany and second largest airline in Europe. And maybe you've flown with them before. In English, people usually say Lufthansa. But Lufthansa. in German, we say Lufthansa. So the emphasis on the first yeah. syllable, Lufthansa versus Lufthansa. And that was the last brand name on my list. So now, of course, I want to know from you guys which of these brand names you've always mispronounced and maybe which ones you didn't even realize were German brands. And also let me know in the comments below which German brand or maybe German celebrity name or something like that you've always wanted to know how to pronounce it correctly. And maybe I can do a follow up video soon and let you guys know what the pronunciation is. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure that was a great video. That was a really good video. I, I, I actually learned a lot and I enjoyed the historical background that was given for each uh, mispronouncing, mispronounced word. Um, let me know what you guys thought of it. If you have other videos you want me to watch, throw them in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for the support recently, especially on the German reactions. Um, yeah, they're doing really well, a lot better than I thought, I would, thought they would and I appreciate all of uh, my new German subscribers. Uh, remember, this channel was kind of created so I could explore the world so eventually we will be uh, moving to different places throughout Europe and hopefully all around the world as well but uh, this newfound German uh, subscription base will certainly will uh, incentivize me to keep doing some German reactions so that's what we're doing but yeah guys hit the like button hit subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one peace